Hi, I'm Christopher Ray, and welcome to the first of three video lectures about Wu Mingyi's novel, The Man with the Compound Eyes. I recommend that you also take a look at the brief video introduction I made to Wu Mingyi's life and works. The Man with the Compound Eyes, to me, is a remarkable work of storytelling. It compounds its storytelling in many different ways. And in this series of video lectures, I want to focus really on three things that I think make this novel unique. In this video, I want to talk about the kind of island mindset and how islands relate to the sea. This is a novel in which we meet many different inhabitants, human and animal and otherwise, of many different islands. And there's this sense in the novel that somehow all of these islands and all of the oceans in between them are somehow connected. Not all of these connections are positive. A lot of the connections also have to do with the garbage that floats around on the ocean. As I mentioned in my introduction to Wu Ming Yi, the novelist is also a naturalist, and I think he brings a lot of his intimate knowledge of Taiwan's flora and fauna and natural ecosystem to bear into this novel. But this is a novel that doesn't want us just thinking about Taiwan. It takes what I would consider to be an oceanic perspective. We are meant to see the big picture from multiple different perspectives. In this video lecture, I want to focus on the islands because I believe that one implicit message of this novel is that we are essentially all at sea on an island of our own. In the second video lecture, I'll focus on how this is a novel about writing and storytelling. The man with the compound eyes himself is also a writer and a storyteller. In the third video lecture, I'll focus on the motif of the compound eyes as a way of understanding memory, writing, and ecosystems. In this novel, we have very unstable islands. We have the small community on Wayo Wayo. We have the floating island of trash, which Atile calls Gesi Gesi. And then we have Taiwan, which is, of course is a real place but there's a fictionalized version that we get in this novel. I'll then talk about the Pacific Garbage Patch, which is a real-life ecological catastrophe and which is one of the inspirations of this novel. Finally, this is not a novel of static islands. These islands are in flux, and people and animals and other beings are traveling in between them and on them. We have a novel of many islands. The obvious ones would be Wayo Wayo, Gesi Gesi, and Taiwan. Wayo Wayo is a place so small that you could walk around it in a day. And therefore, the human inhabitants of this island have to be extremely careful about maintaining a balance. Because if that balance is lost, catastrophe will result for everyone. Gesi Gesi, the floating trash island, which eventually turns into multiple islands, is of course a man-made phenomenon, which then swirls around in the ocean. And is not just a singular island, it is one that eventually breaks up into multiple islands, which different characters ride in different directions. Taiwan, of course, is a real place, and you can see pristine pictures of the East Coast where this novel is set. In the Chinese version of the novel, Alice lives in the city and county of H, which is easily taken as Hualien County on eastern Taiwan. This is the most populous county on the eastern coast. The English translator rendered H as Haven. Taiwan and the East Coast and the mountain regions in particular are not a stable, picturesque place. They are constantly in flux. We have man-made disasters and we have natural disasters. Earthquakes, mudslides, typhoons, floods. As mentioned in the novel, there is also a lot of smog, both produced in Taiwan and blown over from mainland China. Marine pollution, however, is one of the main focuses of the novel. Wu Mingyi was writing this novel in 2009, and he incorporates into the novel a real-life event of the Great Flood of August 2009. Roads, homes, and lives are damaged by these natural events, and people wonder, would the island be underwater in 10 years? So this is not a one-time event. This is a cycle that comes back again and again. This is just part of the way of life in Taiwan. Within the novel, we have nature with a type of agency, which may seem to be impinging on what human beings are doing. But I think that a lot of the road building, for example, is seen as a type of human folly that is not taking into account these natural processes. Hualien, which sits very close to a major active fault line, has been hit by additional earthquakes since the novel was published. So we have these obvious islands of Wayo Wayo, Gesi Gesi, and Taiwan. But I think that it's very important to acknowledge that we also have islands that are made from perspectives, that are defined by perspectives. We have even have a chapter called Another Island. We have Atele's Island. Well, which island are we referring to here? Because he inhabits Wayo Wayo, but then he inhabits Gesi Gesi, and then he inhabits Taiwan. And then he goes back out to sea. And even when we're talking about Taiwan, Atele's Taiwan and Alice's Taiwan and Dahu's and Hafei's and other characters are all different. And this novel is constantly giving us an interplay of earth and sea. So for example, Hafei's island, we have this indigenous Panka woman who runs a coffee house called the Seventh Sisid. And Sisid in Tagalog means to dive headfirst into water or to swim underwater. And this is a place that ends up underwater. It is inundated by the sea. 
These earth and sea perspectives on islands and on the ocean are also compounded with other characters. So we have Detlef Bolt looking down at the island of Taiwan, a place that he had visited 30 years earlier. Another character who is paired with him is Sarah, who is not really terrestrially focused. She is a marine biologist. And this pairing of the earth and sea are also integral to life on Waio Waio, whose inhabitants believe in both an earth sage and a sea sage. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch is a real-world ecological catastrophe, which is represented in the novel as this floating trash island. This is a fictional visualization of a real-world problem. And the author himself has talked about reading about this phenomenon of the floating trash island and incorporating it into his novel. But we actually also have a different type of invasion where the novel starts with people actually tunneling through a mountain from the west coast to the east coast of Taiwan. And in Wu Mingyi's account, he decided to incorporate the tunneling over to eastern Taiwan because he thought that this would also lead to additional pressure on this pristine landscape. The indigenous Bunun character Da Hu once reads about an oceanographer, Charles J. Moore. Moore is a real person who is credited with bringing global attention to this ecological catastrophe. Moore made this discovery back in 1997, but the problem has only doubled or more since then. Oceanic garbage patches refers to these immense volumes of plastic garbage found in the Pacific Ocean and in other oceans. These are mostly microplastics and not visible to the human eye and they're circulated by ocean currents. So you may have them being concentrated in one area, sometimes joining together, sometimes breaking apart. And these are unbalancing the marine ecosystem on an ongoing basis. There have been scientific studies calculating the millions of metric tons that enter the ocean from the land every single year. So what may seem like science fiction or fantasy in Wu Mingyi's novel is actually a potential reality when you calculate the math for how much trash there is in the ocean, and how much coastline there is in the world. So you can find images of large plastics in the ocean, but most of the so-called garbage patch is not visible to the naked eye. A lot of plastic products are made up of nurdles, which are fused together, but they eventually break down. The Pacific garbage patch is also not singular. You have multiple different garbage patches within these ocean gyres, circulating around, growing in intensity and concentration, and also sometimes fusing or merging with other patches. In the novel, the trash vortex is described as essentially a return of everything we have ever thrown away. The Chinese edition of the novel includes a foreword by a different writer who identifies one theme of the man with the compound eyes as being the banality of destruction. We've heard about the banality of evil, of people who just follow orders and send other people to their deaths. But we're also now somewhat inured to images like this of a seabird that has ingested all of these plastics to its doom. And to be sure, we can find many types of sci-fi entertainments that show these waste futures in which the Earth is just completely filled with garbage. Humans have to abandon the planet, and all they leave behind are these robots to clean up after them. This theme of being besieged by garbage, of a whole tide of garbage coming back to humanity, and some people having to pick through it for their very survival, is one that you can find in contemporary Chinese science fiction as well. Taiwan may be considered a comprehensible island, although in this novel I think it is represented in a way that is slightly defamiliarized. But we also have this island called Gesi Gesi, which is represented as being an incomprehensible island. This earth sage uses many terms, and the one he uses most frequently is Gesi. And this word is mainly used to describe what one does not understand. Atile says, I never expected to get grounded on Gesi Gesi the name I gave to the floating island, meaning a place covered in incomprehensible things. So this island is not just incomprehensible once, it is incomprehensible in a compound sense. Further, it is not just a place, it is a moving vehicle of incomprehensibility. The scale of this disaster is beyond human understanding. So why islands? I think that beyond the simple fact that Wu Mingyi himself is from Taiwan, he is also trying to create many different fictional visualizations of islands and suggesting that all of these islands eventually return to the sea. So Waio Waio is inundated by a tidal wave or a tsunami, and Taiwan is also represented as being in this process of continually returning to the sea through earthquakes, floods, landslides, and these different types of encroachment of the ocean. And the nature of the sea itself also changes, and that we get engulfed by the sea of our own trash. So you can easily see how this is a parable of us all being on the same island, the island of the earth within this vast ocean of the universe. We are essentially on a Waio Waio of a different name. Within this particular island, we find someone who is on the margins of that island. The island itself is a very marginal, ever-shifting place. 
but we have this seaside house, which becomes a sea house, so it becomes inundated by the sea. It is also at this boundary between land and sea, this liminal space, which is also represented as being between life and death. Alice is suicidal over the loss of two of her loved ones, but it is also at this place where she discovers a new life, which comes in over the sea and gives her a new lease on life. We'll discuss the significance of this creature in the coming videos.